Hey everybody, welcome back. So hopefully everybody is doing well and relaxing at home this weekend and doing your social distancing and doing your part. So today what I want to do is I'll go do a quick update on current status, what we're seeing out there. And then I want to get into some do-it-yourself initiatives as far as masks, hand sanitizer, and then uh, decontamination as well. So because that's something that I'm talking to a lot of people about right now is when I go out to get my groceries or into a public place, as much as we want to limit that, there is some activity where we actually leave the house, uh, especially to buy food. What do you want to do when you get back to the house, right? Back to your wherever you live to make sure you're not bringing in any of those germs or infections with you, right? So that's what we're going to talk about today. Uh, start off with uh, Dr. Ryan of The Who. I've been watching him on TV and actually pretty impressed with him so far in his responses. So if you have an opportunity to listen to some of his talks, he is the one person at the World Health Organization who I actually would listen to. So, um, you know, I think that's quite interesting. He's the guy with the Scottish accent and um, so worth listening to. Uh, of course, the other guy, Tedros, I wouldn't give him the time of day. There's actually a call for resignation out there. Uh, at change.org. So if you're interested in that, you can take a look. I'll, I'll put the link down below. Uh, I've, I've signed up for it. Um, I think he should be removed as soon as possible uh, just because of what he's been doing there and the lack of real help that he's been providing. Dr. Ryan, on the other hand, though, seems to make a lot of sense. He's been giving very good advice and guidance. So um, maybe he can take his place. So that would be awesome. Anthony, you can't say his last name, Fachi Fuchi. He's the U.S. infections disease expert. The guy that you see uh, laughing behind Trump when Trump is talking. Uh, there's a lot of videos out there of that where he's just, he can't con contain himself anymore. And he puts his hand over his face like that. Uh, so really funny videos of, of that. He's he's a little guy who you see on the news quite a bit. And, and not really giving any really good guidance, I don't think, um, at all. So he just fills in, in the news spots. Uh, you know, I think Dr. Ryan is far superior as far as his very direct and accurate guidance. Um, both Anthony Fachi, Fuchi, Fasi, I don't know. And Tedros, basically useless. And some of what they say, I don't think is is, is helpful at all. But anyway, that's what I've seen lately. Uh, numbers are going up, of course. Um, a lot of uh, public or uh, government officials are infected now. And they've taken themselves out of direct contact, which is good. I would have recommended most people, most government officials would have wanted to do this and, and done the virtual thing almost immediately, but uh, we don't really see that. So uh, I'm not sure why they don't have those protocols in place. So, all right, let's get into do-it-yourself stuff because at this point, many of you are looking at how would you do that? And if you do find them, they're very expensive. So what can you do to, to do it yourself? And I see a lot of people out there on Twitter and stuff, Instagram, uh, with pictures of what they've done. I think it's pretty good. And a lot of people will be critical of what they're doing and say, oh, well, you know, it's not going to not going to be effective. You know, it's not going to seal. It's not the right material. It's the the, the, the virus particles are going to go right through it. All of that is true to some extent. But as I always say, something is better than nothing, provided you know how to put it on and take it off. So, of course, you want to watch the videos on the Internet that talk about how to safely put on and remove your PPE how to take care of your PPE, right? Uh, PPE is, sorry, uh, personal protective equipment. And that's really important. So there's the material and the construction and the fit of the masks, but also the way that you handle the masks. So that's equally important, right? Because you can have the best mask in the world and then you go and touch it with your hands or it touches your face or your clothing or something like that. And now it's got that cross contamination. So of course you wanna avoid that. So go Google that if you're making your own masks, that's awesome. Uh, go ahead and do that, but also know kind of how to use it right as well. I think that's well worth the time to do that. Some of the things that I've seen have been effective is taking a look at your furnace. So many of us have houses that you live in and, and uh, those houses have a furnace, of course, and you have filters in the furnace. And I've mentioned this before in some of my other videos that those furnace filters, if you've got a box of them, and many of us do, we have a box uh, of like six or eight, so we don't have to buy them individually. Take a look at where, you, where you're where you keeping those. Take a look at the rating on them. And it usually just says right on the box what they're going to filter. Sometimes that's biological. Sometimes it'll have a number. 
the higher the number, typically the better. Sometimes it'll actually even show you a chart of all the different filters that are out there by that manufacturer and how that one in particular fits in that scale. And so what you're looking for usually, and it's gonna depend on the type of filter and the type of brand, but what you're typically looking for is uh, from, it goes from like one to 2000 typically as far as the numeric rating. Anything over 1500 I think is gonna be pretty good, but look for what it filters out. Um, and I think that even a lower number is gonna be better than better than nothing. So use what you have, but you can take those filters, they're kind of perforated and, 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 and kind of have that V shape. You can just take it and flatten it out for a while and then cut it to shape and then get some strings or something so that it'll actually mount to your face. Will it be awesome? No, it's not gonna have that kind of nose bridge, steel nose bridge that you would see on a, on a professional N95 masks. However, if you have to go out, it beats putting your scarf around your, your face or something, right? Like I think if you're going to, to a store, a lot of people have nothing because they, did, they didn't buy a mask. So if you have something, I think that that's gonna be, I would feel better about that. So there's a lot of videos out there where, where experts are talking about what would happen if we all wore masks when we go out. And of course we can't do that. So we don't advocate for that. We don't say to do that because we're worried that that will result in healthcare professionals not having masks because we don't have enough. But if we all knew how to operate PPE, if we all knew how to safely take, put it on and take it off, if we all had masks and could wear them, if we had ample supply, then the predictions by experts are that this would greatly reduce the infection rate of this virus. So those of you that are making masks, I think that's an excellent contribution. I think that something's better than nothing. I think that you, if you learn how to operate with that equipment, you should be in a better state than if you had nothing. So great job. So Furnace filters. The other thing that I've learned recently is vacuum filters. So vacuum filters, you can get the HEPA uh, anti-allergic filters for your vacuum. They sell them pretty cheap. If you go to, well, I'm up in Canada, so we went to Canadian Tire this week and we picked up a couple. And so we can actually cut those to shape. And Canadian Tire in Canada, if you live in Canada, uh, has been pretty good with hand sanitizer and different things like that. So check it out. If you live in the US, there's a bunch of different stores that are kind of equivalent to Canadian Tire uh, that you can go to and check out. Canadian Tire in Canada is kind of like a, a, a cheapo um, hardware store. So um, if you have a hardware store, check it out. If you do venture out to these stores and you're trying to buy either furnace filters or vacuum filters, I would check on Amazon to see if they have them because any home delivery at this point is going to be better than, than going out yourself. But if you have to go out, phone the stores first. And I would phone either in the morning or later in the day when they're not as busy and, and not as hectic. But just ask them, hey, do you have stock? I don't, I don't want to go there in case you don't have stock because a lot of places will be sold out. So I would definitely recommend that. I'm doing that for everything now. Uh, I wanted to get some dirt for my garden. So I'm coordinating that. And I'm thinking, well, maybe if they deliver, even though there's a charge to that, that might be better. Uh, so I'm phoning them up to see, if, you know, to coordinate that first rather than me going there. So I definitely recommend that. So furnace filters vacuum filters there's probably some other things out there too that you could cut up to, to to use that have sufficient material if you know of any please let me know just put them in the comments down below and uh, that would be great for everybody to find out about that but those are the two that i'm aware of that that i think work pretty well uh, of course if you do have an n95 mask they are meant to be disposable they are meant to be a one-time use mask but hard times means we, we you know we have to use what we've got and adapt, right? So these masks can be reused. I've heard of people putting them in the oven. Uh, I personally don't think I would do that because I would probably burn them like I burn all food I put in the oven. But you can you can put them out in the sunlight for a while. I would probably leave them out for a few days if you can. So if you have a couple masks, you can cycle through the different masks uh, and that's an option. For my gas mask, I have a filter that I, uh, I'm gonna reuse. So as I use it, I take it off, put a new one on, and the old one I put out in the sun for a little while to make sure that it dries off. Also, the sunlight helps sterilize it from, from the bacteria as well, right, from the germs. So I think that that has been pretty effective from what I've read, and that's what I'm doing right now. So I'd recommend that. So reuse the masks you have. Don't throw them out, but treat them like a bio, biohazard material, right? Treat them like they're infected. Very much like I, sorry, a little, little uh, tangent here. 
people often tell me, well, there's not many infections in my area, so I'm probably pretty good. So people are making an assumption that um, people are not infected. I think at this point, no matter where you live, no matter where you are, even if you're in the most backwoods, hillbilly, Hickville place, assume everybody at this point outside of your family, outside of where you live is infected. Because if they're not now, they probably will be soon. So, and it's the same thing with materials, right? That's where I was going with that, is the materials that you have when you come into the house, whether it be your clothes or your mask or your eye protection, uh, treat it like it's all infected. Treat it like that there, it's a biohazard material and, and that you need to take care of it in such a fashion. That way, you're going to have that protocol and that, that, that safety that around that to stop that cross-contamination. So when you take it off your face, take it off very carefully, put it down very carefully in maybe a tray or something that's going to be that you don't have to handle. So you don't have to handle it directly. Put it into the sunlight so it can get sterilized. Leave it there for a while. Make sure other people don't touch it. Wow, I'm getting blasted by sunlight here. Okay, that's weird. Um, I am right by a window, so I'm getting tons of sun every once in a while, which is good. It's getting, getting my vitamin D. So try that. Uh, so furnace filters, vacuum filters, reuse your masks. Now that's kind of the, the, the do-yourself masks. There's lots of stuff on, on YouTube, on, on Twitter, on um, Instagram. So check it out. People are being very creative there. But look for a good fit, the best material that you can get, and, uh, and then making sure that it's, it's going to uh, work well for you. Uh, something is better than nothing. Now let's move over to hand sanitizer. Now hand sanitizer... I don't know whether to, to cry or to laugh about this stuff here because it's uh, there's a lot of stuff in the news right now, which is just crazy. Uh, okay, let me kind of go through my notes here so I don't miss anything. But I think that for in general, for hand sanitizer, my recommendation is don't make it at home. I know that's counter, counter to what my title is here, like do-it-yourself stuff, right? But uh, don't touch your face. Um, but, but really... I see so many mistakes being made here by the general public, and I'm sure yours is going to be way better than than the ones that we're seeing fail. But but there's hand sanitizer is still available out there. It's it's not as hard to get. It's not as expensive to buy as the masks are. So you can still do it, and, and that's what I would recommend. Just because we're just going off the rails here with our with trying to do it ourselves, you can. And I'm going to put a link down below, and it's from the Who. And typically, I wouldn't give you stuff from the Who because I don't really like their guidance but this one actually is not bad and you can google other stuff as well and i would compare it uh the recipes what you want to make sure is that you're getting at least 70 percent uh alcohol uh in this right and and by saying that i know that that, that that's gonna <sighs> people have made terrible mistakes with the whole alcohol part of this right and i'm gonna get into that but read the recipes and and go through that way if you're determined to make your own it is possible. There's some good uh, directions out there, but overall, I just recommend against it just because of all the mistakes I see being made. If you go out and buy it, go out and buy like a big tub of it, right? Which seems ridiculous, but you're going to go through a lot. So why buy the little tiny guys? Uh, if you've got a couple of the little tiny ones, which, which I like for travel, I always have them in my pack, which I've talked about before. But if you have some of those, perfect. Just reuse those containers and take the big tube that you've got and just use that to refill the little ones. It's cheaper to buy the big container. So buy as big of a container as you can get. Maybe buy a couple of them, put them on the shelf, refill your little ones that you're going to put in your pocket and take with you, put in your car, right? Those are fantastic for travel, but they're expensive. And, and you go through a lot of these little containers if you're going to do it that way. Buy whatever you can find. But if you can find the big big tubes of it, big you know pump things, then, then get some of those is my recommendation, right? That'll keep you set for a while. So do that. 70% alcohol if you're going to make your own. Uh, and that's the trick, right? People are trying to make their own. They're starting off with a good level, but then they're adding all these cool things in there like tea tree oil and all sorts of other exotic stuff. And then that brings that percentage down. And now all of a sudden it smells good. It feels good, but it's not effective. So what's the point, right? You're just going to have nice smelling hands, um, but that's not going to help you when you're on a ventilator. So, you know, that's my thought on it anyway. A lot of people are having allergic reactions to the do-it-yourself stuff that they're making. And uh, that's bad because now that means you're going to the hospital or to your doctor. And that's not what we want. That's We want the opposite of that. We want you to be nowhere near a hospital right now. 
We don't want you calling them. We don't want you phoning them. We don't want you going there. We don't want, we don't want any of that. Right. So if you're going to have an allergic reaction, which is quite possible for anyone, I might even have one. Right. So what I want to do for any of these things that I'm sticking on my body, I'm going to put a little tiny bit on first and just test it. How's that going to work out? Leave it there for a little while, for an hour or two. See what happens, right? Just take that level of precaution with any of these things. Any new medication that you're taking, any new ointments or anything like that, try a little bit first just to make sure that it's it's not going to cause some crazy allergic reaction to you, and that'll work out better. Uh, toxic. So people are making, I don't know how they're doing this, but they're making this hand sanitizer toxic. And, and maybe it's just like too much alcohol or they're putting some weird stuff into it. But people are going to the hospital because they're they're rubbing stuff on their hand over and over and over again. And it's actually causing some toxic toxicity. That's hard to say uh, in their body. And then they're going to the hospital. So, again, super bad. Right. Don't we don't want to do that um, in Iran. I don't know. So I think that I'll, and forgive me if I get this wrong, but I think in Iran, they're they're the, the sale of alcohol is prohibited or something like that or the consumption. There's some rules there. And so they heard that you, you need alcohol on your hands or alcohol fights coronavirus. So there's alcohol poisoning and not just a little bit, but a lot in Iran. So I don't know what's going on there. Like, I, I don't know how you get that that messed up, that message uh, and what they're doing with the alcohol. But that's bad. Right. So we you know don't go and drink a whole ton of vodka thinking that it's going to cure your coronavirus. Right. Because it's it's not going to just be bad. So I, I, I don't know if that's happening with people, if they're just drinking more, hearing that, that alcohol fights Corona, but, but none of that's true, right? So it's uh, the alcohol is killing the germs on your hands. That's, that's, the, that's the thing. So, uh, and then of course, if you're using a very high alcohol content in this mixture, you're rubbing it on your hands, your hands are going to get dry. And then of course you want to get some moisturizer on your hands to make that feel more comfortable. So you're probably going out to buy moisturizer. I've got some oh, here somewhere, somewhere, but I have little tubes of it. And I've, I've actually used it before when I went to dry areas like Denver, where my hands would get really dry because I'm from the West Coast and my skin is not used to that. So I'm used to that that brand. So if you can reuse that brand uh, rather than trying something new, that's going to be that's going to be better. Right. So so try that. Uh, so that so that's my hand sanitizer. Uh, do it yourself uh, recommendation. Um, if you can just go buy some that'll save you uh, a lot of hassle so but if you're gonna make it then uh, I'd love to know what the recipe is that you uh, put together how well it works for you if you want to put it in the comments below for people uh, everybody would really appreciate that so thanks a lot uh, all right so the last thing I want to talk about is decontamination so when you go out and then you come back in what do you do and I've talked about this before uh, so in some of my other videos I might go into it a little more detail but basically this is what I would recommend. So when you go out, wear clothes that you can easily wash. So don't wear your tuxedo or your formal wear or anything like that. I wear like a, a t-shirt with my wool hoodie. So if I want, I can put my hoodie up, although I don't really do that. I'm not to that level yet, but uh, it's just a wool hoodie. It's very thin. It keeps me warm in different circumstances. So, cause the weather here is changing quite a bit right now. Cause we're, we're in this uh, weird season. So I want something where I'm not going to be changing my clothes all the time, right? I don't want to be doing that. That's cross an opportunity for cross contamination. So I have that. I have my just my my uh, casual pants, and, which I can easily throw in the wash, and uh, and so I wear that. So then when I when I go out, I come back and I throw all that in the wash right away. Uh, if I'm wearing a jacket, and I've heard some of you are doing this, which is awesome. My mom's doing this, so mom, awesome job. You you surprised me with how effective your system is. I was talking to her this morning. I was like, hmm, she's got it dialed in. So she's not even watching my videos and she's got it dialed in. So, so good job. Uh, she hangs her jacket when she comes home. She puts that on the outside of her house. And not all, all of you can do that, but she does that. She hangs it outside of her house and the sun hits it for a while for, you know, hours or days. And, uh, and that helps quite a bit, I think, right? Yeah. So if you're able to do that, I think that's a good idea. Uh, get your clothes uh, exposed to some sunlight, let them sit for a while. So the, the, the virus has a chance to die on that. So my clothes go into the wash. That's the first thing I do. And then I go have a shower and I, and I scrub myself down. I'm really careful around my eyes. And I think that you you know, your eyes, your nose, your mouth, those are the areas that you want to be really careful of. So I don't want, you know, the soap and everything to just to run into my eyes. I'm worried about stuff getting in the little bit of hair that I have. Uh, in, in areas where I could easily, you know, could go there and then I could touch that and then I could be infected even though I think I'm safe. So, so wash my clothes, have a shower. Um, 
And then anything that I'm bringing home, I usually either leave just outside my door or just inside my door, depending on what it is, right? I live in a pretty safe area. People are not going to steal my stuff. Well, they haven't yet anyway. Uh, so I feel pretty safe leaving it just outside my door for about a day. And, and the virus lives for different durations, depending on the material that it's on. So those surface areas, uh, you can Google that. And it goes from, I think, hours to days. I like to be on the safe side because I don't really trust a lot of the information. So I let it sit there for as long as I can. And then if I want to bring it inside, I'll bring it inside, let it sit inside, depending on what it is. If it's like milk or something perishable, yeah, I will rinse it off, wash it off if I can with gloves on and put it in the fridge. Uh, and that's a little risky, I think, but but I have to get it you know, cold. Some things that don't have to be refrigerated that just need to be kind of cool, like vegetables, I'll put those in my garage. And, um, but I try not to touch the stuff for a while if I can, just so that it has chances, uh, an opportunity for the virus to die over time. So, uh, like I said, I leave my, my groceries in the garage. That's, I find a good loading area for it. It's kind of like the, the decontamination center area. And yeah, so I think that works pretty good. Um, yeah, I've got some Tyrex suits that I bought and I've done some videos on those. I'm not wearing those yet. I just, and the reason I don't is cause I don't have very many. And so this could, this situation could get worse and to a point where I really need them. So I'm saving them for that. And the other thing is that when I, when I go out and wear the level of protective uh, equipment that I have, I'm already freaking people out a and they're looking at me and some people actually get mad. And so if I wear my, my, my uh, Tyrex suits, this like a onesie, uh, almost like looks like a hazmat suit. Basically people wouldn't be able to tell the difference. Probably uh, it doesn't have the big bubble head cause I'm wearing a gas mask anyway. But I don't wear that just because it's not really needed at this point, I think. And then also I just freak everybody out. So I'm trying to be kind to, to people as far as their emotional states these days. So there's that. Um, and then, but if I if it gets worse, that's what I'm going to switch to is I would wear that. I'd wear gloves. I'd have plastic wrap around my feet. Uh, I would have it all cinched up with duct tape. And then when I come home, I've got a sprayer like what you use for your garden. And I would mix a water bleach solution in that. And I would have a decontamination area with a drain where I would stand and someone would spray me down with that. Uh, probably from like our balcony or our porch, somewhere where they're not going to get a, the wind blow it into their face. And then we would set up something like that. I had envisioned doing that in the garage, but I think actually doing it outside is better so that it drains, so that those particles don't have a chance to stick to anything like my groceries uh, and stuff like that. So that's kind of next step. You know, if it gets really, really bad and it's just everywhere, which I think it probably will be. So it'll be interesting to see how quickly we move to that state. But anyway, that's kind of my my planned decontamination procedure in the future. But right now it's really just be super careful. Actually, I, I have a, uh, a bunch of wipes that I also have in my car. So when I get into my car, I'm wiping down my steering wheel every time I get into my car. And because um, I'm just assuming that stuff was left there. The trucks and the cars are pretty safe, actually, because it's in the sunlight. So the sun is coming into my cab all the time. So I think because I'm only using my truck now every couple of days, I think things like the steering wheel and the controls uh, are pretty safe, even though I would have contaminated those if I had stuff on my hands uh, when I was using it last. So I do wipe it down uh, when I get in, but I think it's pretty safe. Anyway, that's it. That's my um, do it yourself update. And if you've got any ideas for, for that have worked for you, things I missed, anything like that, please put it in the comments down below. If you like these videos, if you could hit the like button, that'll give you an indication that I'm moving in the right direction. If you want to be alerted to new videos, hit the subscribe button. That'd be awesome. I'm working right now on a video on how to work out at home. Still working on that, trying to get some good weather for that. Also working on some videos on if you get laid off how to avoid getting laid off and also what to do if you do get laid off in this environment because there's nowhere to run right now, right? And so that's high risk for people. And I've heard a lot of people that are struggling through that. So I want to try to help if possible with some guidance there. So those are the things to look forward to. If you want to be alerted to that, hit the subscribe button. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Safe travels. See you later.